Right on this worksheet. <coughs> Follow along. Write these down. I think I'm still going to collect it. No. So you better write everything down that I write down. If you just write the answer down, then I probably won't give you credit. Since I did it all. Number one, and I'm going to go very quickly, so you've got to write quickly and pay attention. What kind of triangle is that? Isosceles. Isosceles. Guarantee there's one like this on test. I put it on there every year because it confuses everybody. If these two sides are congruent, what do you know about the angles across from those sides? They've got to be congruent. So if this one down here at the bottom is 2x, what's this one up here got to be? So you can put that in there. All right? First thing you ought to do, even if you don't need that, write it in there. Again, Key thing from last time, key idea that you have to remember, if two sides in a triangle congruent, then angles across from those sides have to be congruent. And it also works the other way around where you switch those two triangles. All right? What equation can I set up then? 40 plus 2x plus 2x equals 180. Three angles of a triangle always have to add up to equal 180. Collect like terms. These two x's are on the same side of the equal sign. So you just put them together. Subtract 40 on both sides. Make sure you're writing because you won't have time to write it. I'm going to erase it as soon as I'm done. You should be following along and copying. 180 minus 40 is 140. What's the last step? Divide by 4. X equals, I don't know what 4 in 140 is, so come out here and you can do this, right? How many 4's are there in 14? 3. So put a 3 up here. 3 times 4 is 12. Subtract. How many 4's in 20? 5. 5 times 4 is 20. Comes out even, so x equals 35. Somebody read the directions for me. What they ask us to find? Just find x. So do we have to go any farther? No. Sometimes you might have to plug back in, right? Number two. What kind of triangle is this triangle? Isosceles again. Even though you associate two sides being congruent in an isosceles triangle, if two angles are congruent in a triangle, then what kind of triangle is it going to be? Isosceles. So what do we know about the sides opposite those two angles? They have to be congruent. I always, anytime I see the angles in a triangle like this, draw in the arrows to tell me which two sides have to be the same. Anytime I see the sides are congruent, I draw in the arrows to show me which two angles have to be congruent. What equation can I set up from that then? 2x plus x. Got to be careful on this one. This side has to be congruent to that side, so they're equal. Give you a second to write that down. What do you do to start to solve this? All right, you got your equal sign split it up there. You got to get all the x's on one side. So subtract 2x on both sides. 6 equals, what's 3x minus 2x? 1x or just x, right? Now what? Add 6. These cancel. x equals. Do we have to do anything else? No, they're just asking us to find x, right?
While I'm waiting, you could be moving on to the third one, right? Setting up the equation. Number three. Give us a triangle that looks like this. Mine probably won't look much like it. What kind of triangle is this? A right triangle? What other kind of triangle is it? Isosceles. Guess what this kind of triangle is called? It's an isosceles right triangle. Real difficult, right? If it's a right triangle and it's isosceles, then they call it an isosceles right triangle. In an isosceles right triangle. And we'll do this. You know that we could do it this way. What do you know about these two angles down here? They're congruent. This, if those sides are congruent, then those angles are congruent. So if this is 3x, what's this angle? Now we could do that and then set up what equation? If you wanted to solve it that way, 3x plus 3x plus 90 equals 180. That's fine. Go ahead. I'm going to do it a different way. In an isosceles right triangle, something that always happens. If we know that these two angles are congruent to each other, if it's an isosceles right triangle, and this angle is 90, how much is left over for these two angles together? 90. How could we find those two angles? Divide by 2, so how much is each angle? 45. So that angle is 45, that angle is 45. So what's this angle up here? 45. What's this angle? 45. Do we have to set up this big long equation? No, we could just set up that this 3x right here has to equal how much? 45. So you could have set up either one of those and it's going to come out the same. This one's a little easier, so if you can remember that, fewer steps. What is it? x equals what? 15. So an isosceles right triangle, sort of a special triangle. If you don't remember that, could you have went ahead and set up that first equation and solved it that way? Yeah, go right ahead. It's going to give you the same answer. Number four. It looks something sort of like that. This angle right here is 6x plus 6. This angle is 2x. And they tell us that those two sides are congruent. So both these triangles are isosceles triangles. <coughs> if this angle's 6x plus 6, then you know that one up there is how much? 6x plus 6. If this angle's 2x, what's this angle over here? How come? What kind of angles are those two? Vertical angles. Do we have enough now to set up an equation? Three angles of a triangle have to add up to be how much? Let's do something a little different here so that we can make our equation a little shorter. Can you collect all the x's before we write out the equation? How many x's do we have? Don't say three either. 14 x's. So you got 14 x. That takes care of those. Uh, actually, it was that one there. Takes care of those. The 6 and the 6 is going to give us how much? The plus 12, and all that should equal 180. Does that make sense? Again, if, it, if that confused you, could you do 6x plus 6 plus 6x plus 6 plus 2x equals 180? Yeah. We just shortened it up. Instead of writing it all out, we shortened it up before we wrote it down. How do I solve that? Subtract 12. Somebody help me out. What's 180 minus 12? 168. Now what? Divide by 14. This one would probably be nice to have a calculator on, right? 12. Everybody agree with that? Yes, no, maybe?
Do we have to do anything else there? No. No, they ask us to find x. That's 12. That's all we have. Number five, a little tougher on number five. My picture probably, again, won't look exactly like theirs, but it'll be close enough. This, these arcs tell us about those two angles. They're congruent. Now we don't know anything about either one of them right now. All right, the smaller triangle is isosceles. If it's isosceles, what do you know about those two angles? So if this one's 3x, what's this one? <coughs> and then what's this one up here? Now, if we for, do we really care about this smaller triangle? We sort of get rid of it. Do we have enough to set up an equation there? Three angles of a triangle have to add up to be 180. What'd you say it was, David? This angle plus this angle plus this angle should equal 180. Like like terms first, 30 and 90 give us how much? So you got 120 plus 3x equals 180. Now what? Tract 120. I had to yell at my youngest son because he was doing a problem, something like this. And he asked me what 180 minus 120 was. Wait, you can do that in your head, right? What's 180 minus 120? I was going to get mad at him is because if you can't do 180 minus 120 in your head, what are you not doing? You're not thinking. You're not trying. You just want somebody else to do the work for you so that you don't have to. So what's it equal? 20. As soon as I gave him a dirty look about not answering it himself, then he goes, oh, it's 50 it was like 120 minus 70 or something. What kind of triangle is this one again? Sosceles. This angle right here is called the what? Say it again. Vertex angle. These other two angles are called the What's this one? What's this side called? Base. base. And those other two angles are called the base angles. base angles. What do you know about the base angles? They're always congruent. They're always the same. Those are the angles across from the two sides. What are the two congruent sides called? This was the base. The other two sides are called the legs. Uh, so we have all that. Let's see what else they all they tell us that this side or this angle is x. What's this angle over here then? What equation can we set up? Now what did David do there when he got 5x? Went ahead and collected all the like terms before he wrote it down, right? Right, Chloe? And that should equal what? Divide by 5. 36. Do we have to do anything else? I just wanted this to find x. How long is this side over here? We don't know, do we? No. We have no idea. We know absolutely nothing about the sides right now. All we we're told about were the angles. So don't try to put the two together. Angles and sides, you've got to keep them separate. Number seven, I'm not going to write all the given and everything up here. Oops. Just going to go ahead and try to start this, do this two column proof real quick.
Remember, things you ought to look for that you should be able to come up with from here, right? They tell us that uh, first, how many triangles do we have in this picture? Two. If the proof statement is segment AD is congruent to segment CD, then we know that we're going to be using what? Corresponding parts of congruent triangles must be congruent. That's going to be our last reason in our two-column proof. So I'll write that down right now. Should anybody miss that at the end of this? No. If you're proving triangles are congruent, then you're stopping at side, 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 or side, angle, side. But if we're going farther than that, then we know we're going to be using that. If I split off these two triangles, I can't draw it. Not too bad. Split off these two triangles, and they tell us what's the first given tell us so I don't have to keep looking back at the paper. Are those a pair of sides in our two triangles? So that's a pair of sides. Is that enough to say the two triangles are congruent? What do they tell us next in our given? Angle A is congruent to angle C. Angle A is congruent to angle C. That's right here and right here. It's a pair of angles, right? Is that enough to say the two triangles are congruent? No, remember, say the two triangles are congruent, how many parts do you need? Three. Using side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, or angle, angle, side. Uh, any more given? Okay. All right, so you got to be careful here. DB bisects this angle right here. As soon as you know that something is being bisected, what's happening? being split into two congruent parts, right? This time we're bisecting an angle. So each of these two angles have to be what to each other? Congruent. Somebody name this angle over here for me. Angle what? Right here. ABD. How many letters to name an angle? So angle ABD is congruent to, name this angle over here for me. And we knew that because it was being bisected. I'm just writing that down there. That's another pair of angles. Is that enough information to say the two triangles are congruent? By what? Angle, side, angle. Once we know the two triangles are congruent, uh, what do we know about that segment and that segment? They're congruent because of CPCTC. So we should be able to write this two-column proof again right quickly. You've got to do this. If you're not splitting the stuff up, because I see a lot of you sitting around right now doing absolutely nothing, if you're not doing the same thing that I just did over here, splitting it up and marking the congruent stuff and thinking it through, you're never, ever going to understand these two-column proofs. That's why I hate the fact that a lot of times on these pictures, the book marks the congruent stuff for you, because that doesn't help you. That gets you not to look at the picture. What's our first statement going to be? Write quickly on this because I'm going to write quickly. I'm going to erase it as soon as I probably know that that was given. That was a pair of sides, so I put a little S out there. Then where did I go? Angle A is congruent. Angle C, how do we know that? It was given. That was a pair of angles in our two triangles. Was there any more given? Please remember this. It's bisecting angle ABC. If you're bisecting an angle, you're bisecting an angle. What two parts should you come up with that are congruent? Two angles. If you're bisecting a segment, what parts should you come up with? Two segments. This was given to us. 
Do I put an S out here beside this? Was that a pair of sides or a pair of angles? Do I put an A? Not on that one, right? I wait till the next one. Pins off or something. Once I know that this angle right here is being bisected, then what do I know about these two angles? They're congruent. So that logically, that's the next thing I'm going to write down. So angle what? Is congruent to? And how did I know that? Because it was bisected, right? So I say uh, something like if angle bisected, then what's happening to it? Split into two congruent angles. If an angle is bisected, then split into two congruent angles. Was that a pair of angles or a pair of sides in our two triangles? Is that enough to say the two triangles are congruent? Yeah, we got three parts. Name the triangle on the left corner. ABD. Does it matter how you name the first one? No, it makes no difference whatsoever. Now what does matter is you name the triangle on the left, you got to match it up to the one on the right. What do you got to do to this triangle to get it to lay on top of that one correctly? It just flips this time, right? No rotation, no slide, just flips over. So A matches up to what in the other triangle? C. B matches up to B. And D matches up to D. And notice, this is why I want you to make sure that you number your statements and reasons. Because do mine match up anymore? No, so you've got to make sure you got them numbered so I know what goes with what. Be careful here. How did you know that those two triangles were congruent? Is it in the right order over here? No, but we wrote it down over here in our notes when we were going through, right? What's our reason? And I'm going to say this one more time before this test on Monday. If your statement is two triangles, what's the only things that can go as a reason over there? One of those four things. If you put anything else over there as a reason, for the reason for two triangles being congruent, then you know it is wrong. Are we finished? What were we trying to prove this time? How do we know that? Corresponding parts of congruent triangles. So we knew that these two triangles were congruent. So the corresponding parts, the parts that match up, have to be congruent. Going down through this, how many points is this going to be worth on the test? Twelve. Count them up. When I point at it, get the first six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Nobody should miss those. So that's six points. Maybe you don't know what a bisector is. I would hope so, but maybe not. So maybe you miss that one. Maybe you miss that one. Should you be able to match up the triangles? Yeah, you should be able to. So that's seven. Should you be able to get this? Eh, you should have a. 25% chance of guessing and getting it right, right? Let's say you miss it, you're a bad guesser. So you got seven right now. Should you miss this one? Eight. Should you miss this one? Nine. Remember, if it's angles or segments that you're trying to prove, what's your last reason always going to be? CPCTC. So how many did we have? Nine? Yeah. Is that right? 9 out of 12, that reduces down to 3 out of 4. What is that as a percentage? 75%. Right. 75, at least 75%. And that, that was one of the ones, that probably wasn't one of the easier two-column proofs that we've done. Wasn't a real hard one, but it wasn't real easy either. 75%. All right, what I want you to do now. Get out your homework, open up your books to page 219.
And everybody open up their books, even if you didn't do the homework. These are the answers to the problems on 219. Look them over. Mark the ones that you missed. We will go over. We will go over. Problems that you have questions on here in just Questions on the homework problems you want to see worked out? 36. <coughs> Problem 36. Sort of like the ones we were just doing, right? Oh, don't, don't do that. Give us a triangle. Right now, what kind of triangle is that? Isosceles. We know that this angle right here is 3x plus 8. If that's the case, what do you know about that angle over there? 3x plus 8. They have to be the same, right? What are those called again? In an isosceles triangle, those two angles are called the base angles. This is the vertex angle, and they tell us that that vertex angle is 2x plus 20. What equation can we set up from that? Yeah, we will. And that should all equal what? Three angles of a triangle always have to add up to be 180. Guarantee there's a problem on this test. Gives you something like this. set up that same equation? Is it going to be this plus this plus this equals 180? Why not? Those are sides, not angles. Make sure you don't make that mistake. All right? Sides, not angles. I'm going to go ahead and that's 8x plus what? 36 equals 180. Now what do we do? Subtract 36. Somebody help me out and look back while I'm working this out. What they ask us to find? Make sure we know that here at the end. Just find x. What's 180 minus 36? I know it's 100 and something. Divide both sides by 8. What's x equal? 18. Is that the answer I had on my list? I didn't miss it. And you said all they wanted us to do was find x, right? Could we plug that back in and find the angles? Yeah, yeah if we wanted, but they just said find x. That's all we got. Next question. So 27 and 28, since they both go with that same picture, might as well. said that triangle LMN, uh, I got these backwards, LMN, <laughs> put two pictures that look almost identical to each other, one above the other, and I keep looking at the wrong one.
What they tell us about the triangle? Uh, Equilateral. So what do we know about all three sides? So this side is congruent to this side, which is congruent to that whole side, right? Can we set up an equation from that? What do you know about these two sides? So can you set up an equation? Equals 4x minus 2, right? Those two have to be congruent because it's equilateral triangle. What if they would have told us this side over here? Would we want to set up all three sides equal to each other? No, just pick 2. All right. Subtract 3x. 1 equals 4x minus 3x. Then what? Add 2. X equals what? What they ask us to find on this one? X and Y. X and Y. So we found the X, now we gotta find Y. Uh, what else did they tell us? So MP bisects LN. So what do you know about segment LP and segment PN? They're congruent, they're the same because it's being bisected. Now if this triangle was equilateral, let's split off just the big triangle. If it's equilateral, all three sides are congruent, well what else do you know about it? If it's equilateral, what's the other name that you could call it? Equilangular. If it's equilateral, what do you know about this angle right there? Same as the other two, what are they? They're all 60 degrees. Remember, anytime you see something that's equilateral or equilangular, you know all three sides are the same, all three angles are the same, and you know that all three angles have to be 60 degrees. So this angle right here is 60 degrees. This angle is 60 degrees. Well, let's look at this. What do you know about this triangle and this triangle? They're congruent to each other, aren't they? By side angle side, or we could have used side, 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 using the reflexive property, all that stuff. Well, if these two angles are congruent, and this angle up here was 60 degrees, this whole thing, how much does each one of those two parts have to be? 30. Can we find Y now? Just splitting off maybe this one triangle over here. What do you know about the three angles of a triangle? So 30 plus plus 5y should equal 180. That's 90 plus 5y equals 180. Subtract 90. 5y equals 90. Divide by 5. What's y equal? 18. I think those were the answers to 27, right? What 28 asks us to do? Find the measure of each side and then an angle of triangle LMN. LMN, so the big, the big one? Yeah. So we want to find, and I'll just redraw the triangle over here. We want to find each side and each angle. Well, what do we already know about the angles? So we can put those in there. Now the sides, how are we going to find the sides? Somebody said it earlier and I skipped over it. Take x and do what? Plug it in. What's 3 times 3? 9 plus 1. If this side's 10, what's this side over here? What's this side? Anything real difficult about that? Nothing, no real hard math in there. You just had to think it through step by step. You had to go through and find a whole bunch of stuff that didn't really matter to the answer. See, that's the thing. You guys are used to problems like this. You do one step and it gives you the answer. You're not used to problems where you find things that you really don't need for the problem or doesn't, they don't ask you for. You got to find, you had to find out that this angle was 30 degrees. Did they ask us anything about that angle? Absolutely nothing. 
All right? Did they ask us anything about these two segments being congruent? No. All right, but did we need it? Yeah, because we need to be able to say that this triangle on this side is congruent to that triangle on that side. And if that was the case, then these angles were 30. And then we could use that 30 degree angle with this 60 and that 5y to find three angles of a triangle must add up to 180. So a lot of stuff in there that you had to do, even though it didn't look like you needed it, they didn't ask you for it. Those end of year tests and stuff that you're going to have to take, bad thing with those. Apparently they don't think you're smart enough to do a problem this way. So on a question like this, they ask you like 15 different questions. So they'll give you this, and then they'll, they'll like lead you through by the hand. Find x, that'll be question one. Then it'll say, find a segment, or yeah, find segment LM. Then it'll say, find angle LMP. Then it'll say, find angle PMN. Then it'll say, uh, find angle MLP. Then it'll say, find Y. So on, so on, so on, and it'll lead you through a whole bunch of questions by the hand instead of figuring that you can get to this point on your own without answering all those questions separately. Other questions? No? Everybody's ready? Which one? 25. 25. that right. All right, problem 25, they say angle HGK, that's this angle right here, is 28 degrees, and they want us to find angle HJK. They want us to find that angle right there, and they tell us that GK is congruent to GH. GH, that's right here. So what kind of triangle is this one on the left? Isosceles. And they also tell us that HK, that's this, is congruent to KJ. So what kind of triangle is that one? Isosceles. Now again, the reason that a lot of you have trouble with this, is this angle here related to that angle there in any way, shape, or form? No. So can we jump from this being 28 to knowing exactly what that is? No, what you got to do, we know that this triangle over here, mine doesn't look like it, but it's supposed to be an isosceles triangle, so what should be true about those two angles? They should be congruent. Can we find those two? Yeah, you do 180 minus 28, borrow, that's 152. And then you divide that by 2 because those two bottom angles, these two base angles, had to be the same. That's 7. How many 2's in 12? So what's each one of these angles? 76, 76. Did they ask us to find those angles? No. no. What's another angle? Let's number these. 1, 2, 3. What's another angle we can figure out right now? Angle 2. What do you know about angle 2? These two together should add up to be 180. So 180 minus 76. What is that 104? So that's 104. What do you know about angle 1 and angle 3? One and three should be congruent, right? Equal to each other. If I'm looking at this, they tell us that that, we know that this angle is 104. Well, these are the two base angles, so they have to be congruent. How can you find it then?
Now, do I really have to do that? Look back over here. What's 180 minus 104? 76. And then what do you do with that? Divide it by 2. How many 2's in 7? 3. How many 2's in 16? So what's each one of these angles? 38 degrees. This is the angle they ask us to find, right? So what's our answer? 38 degrees. So again, you have to go through a bunch of stuff that didn't look like you needed, but you did to find that angle, right? In your notes, go ahead and start copying this down. That's not what I want. Maybe skip a line in between each one. This is what's going to be on the test. We're not going to have much time for this game. Write quickly. Write quickly because we're going to go over this very quickly because I want to do some of these problems out of the book and, and do this. It's not really a game, but it's Sort of. Hurry. So this is what's going to be on the test. Again, skip a line in between each one. Uh, don't worry about the before and after down there. We probably won't get to that because I'd rather get to the problems. All right, you probably want to write some of this down as I go through it. Classify triangles according to their sides. Their sides. Uh, don't do that. Sides. Remember, we had three names. Uh, scalene. What's it mean to be a scalene triangle? No sides equal. Isosceles. What's that mean? Two sides are equal and what's the third kind? Equilateral and that means all sides are the same. For the angles we had four names. Anybody remember those? Acute means that all the angles are less than 90. Obtuse, be careful with this one. One angle more than 90. Right. What's that mean? One angle equals 90. And then equal angular. And what's that tell you? All angles are congruent. And if a triangle is equal angular, then you also know it's equal lateral. Remember, two, how can you figure out a if I give you some little triangle on, a, on the test and say, tell what kind of triangle this is, how can you figure out if it's a right triangle for sure? Right Use a corner of a piece of paper to see if that is a right angle or not. 180 degrees, that's just the three angles of a triangle, right? Three angles of a triangle, got to add up to 180. Not the three sides, three angles. I got this picture, that's angle one, angle two, angle three, angle four. Does so anybody remember which one's the exterior angle? Angle four. Which ones are the remote interior angles in relationship to angle four? One and two. Remember it's the two that are oh, farthest away from it. So we know here that angle one plus angle two has to equal angle four. What are these four things used for? Prove. Prove triangles congruent. Nothing else. That's the only ways that we have to prove triangles are congruent. 
All right, this is for segments or angles. And you know that it always has to come after. It's got to be after one of these four things, right? All right, so, and what's it stand for? It's, it says you prove angles or segments, but what's it stand for? Corresponding parts of congruent triangles must be congruent. So the parts in the triangles that match up, if you know the two triangles are congruent, then all the parts, if I take these two triangles and I know that they're congruent, because they match up perfectly, then what do I know about all the segments that match up? They're congruent. What do I know about all the angles that match up? They're congruent. Isosceles triangles and equilateral triangles with an isosceles triangle. Remember that if, key thing here, if you know two sides are congruent, then what else do you know? The two angles across from them have to be congruent. And it works the other way around also. If the two angles are congruent in a triangle, then you know the two sides across from them are congruent. Equilateral triangle. Yeah, that's a terrible equilateral triangle. What do you know about all three sides? Congruent. What do you know about all three angles? They're all 60. Guaranteed I put something on there about, I say, triangle ABC is equilateral. Find angle A. 60 degrees. Be able to do the two column proofs. On the two column proofs, the main thing is make sure you know how to prove triangles congruent. How many parts does it take to prove two triangles are congruent? Three. Three. Side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, 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 side. Be able to do the equations just like the ones that we were just doing. We've been doing them all class long. Oh, uh, because we, we also went over, remember, we went over like hypotenuse leg with the right triangles, but I didn't want to put those on there because is it going to be a big deal? No, because I if you can prove it one of these ways, I'd rather see it that way than by that anyway. We only got a little more than 10 minutes. What I want you to do, open up your books, get out a piece of paper, open up your books to page. I thought I had the page number up there. Of course I didn't. Uh, it's the review page for this chapter. Page 227 is where it starts. Page 227. <coughs> What we're going to do, and we want to try to get through as many as we possibly can. So I want somebody to come up, draw a number out of this bag. That's the problem we're going to work on page 227, 228, 229, whichever page it happens to be on. One of you goes to the board, works it real quick. You get the problem correct as a class. Then I'm going to let you draw a problem out of this other bag. Problems in this other bag are problems that are on the chapter four test that you will take on Monday. All right? So somebody come up and draw a number real quick. Write the number on the board, then start trying to work it together as a class. Everybody scared to even draw a number? Wow. Yeah, just, it doesn't matter who comes up. Just somebody come up and draw a number. Number six. Number six. That's all we need to do. Problem number six. So start working out problem number six. I think that's a multiple choice or a matching or something. Isn't it? That should be easy to put up there. Get it done real quick. 